Hello and welcome to lecture one of the work unit in Phys 1104 and I'll bet you feel that you haven't been doing enough work in this course so this unit is all about work. Let's start off with this example of a person using a rope to pull a cart and our system is going to be just the cart and because of the person pulling on it the cart speeds up and that's because there's a force exerted on the cart by the rope. Note that the rope isn't in the system and so that's an external force. We already know from earlier in the course that external forces change the system momentum. But the momentum is clearly not the only thing that's changing here. This system is gaining kinetic energy, and there doesn't seem to be any other state change going on inside the system uh, to compensate for that, and so it looks like this system is not closed. Well, the way we know to verify that is to look for a state change in the environment. And indeed, there is one here, but it's rather subtle. The person is consuming chemical energy, and some of that is ending up as kinetic energy in the system, and some of it is ending up as thermal energy in the person. But that's a little subtle. And it certainly looks like the reason the system's kinetic energy is increasing is the action of this force that the rope is exerting on the cart. So this external force is changing the system's kinetic energy. But we know that external forces always change the system's momentum, but they don't always change the system's energy. So what we'd now like is a better way of determining when forces do and don't change a system's energy. Here's another example. Let's think about a spring, and it's being compressed by a brick that's been placed on top of it, and our system is just the spring. So the brick is exerting a force on the spring, and that's an external force because the brick isn't in our system. And we can see that our system is gaining spring potential energy, but once again there doesn't appear to be any corresponding uh, reduction in an internal energy of the system, and so it looks like this is not a closed system, and we should identify a state change in the environment. Well, in this case, it's that the brick moved down, and so since the brick and the earth are both out in the environment, we can say that the environment has lost gravitational potential energy. And so it's the gravitational potential energy in the environment that has become spring energy in our system. I didn't include the gravitational potential energy in my energy bar chart because it's not in my system. So here we see that an external force, the force that the brick ex exerts on the spring, appears to have caused a change in the system's potential energy. Now here's a person pulling a block, and I've included the block and the floor in my system. And again, there's an external force, which is the force that the rope exerts on the block. And what's happening now, if the block moves at constant velocity because of this interaction, is that the system of the block and the floor simply gains thermal energy. And so we see that external forces, in this case the force of the rope on the block, can also cause irreversible state changes inside the system. In all of those three cases I've just looked at, it looks like an external force has caused the system's energy to change. We're going to define work as the change in a system's energy due to the action of external forces. Compare this with impulse. We've defined impulse as the change of a system's momentum due to external forces. And so work and impulse are rather similar in many ways, but we should contrast them. Impulse is a vector, and we can get components of impulse by looking at the areas under the various force component versus time graphs. Work, though, is a scalar, so in some senses it's going to be easier to work with than impulse. And you might ask whether it's an area under a graph. Well, stay tuned and you'll see. It is an area under some graph, but not a force versus time graph. I also want to contrast work with something else that we won't really look at in this course, but I feel I should mention, and it's heat. One way to change a system's energy is to have external forces act on the system, but another is to have thermal energy get transferred directly between the system and the environment. When that happens, the amount of energy that was transferred between the system and the environment is called heat. And note, that means heat is not the same thing as thermal energy. 
That's all I'm going to say about heat for this entire course. I'll have to leave that as a topic for a thermodynamics course. Much of the discussion that's going to follow in this unit depends on you being able to recognize when a system is closed. And also, it's easy to still mix up closed with isolated. So let's make sure you understand these concepts, even though they're not new, they're really from several units back. So let's think of three cases. One is a cart launched from a wall by a spring, with the cart and the spring both in the system. Another is a cart launched from a wall by a spring, but with the system being just the cart. And the third situation is two carts colliding, one of them has a spring attached to it, and the system is both carts and the spring. And think about which of these systems are isolated and which of them are closed, and match each system to the correct description.